What's up guys and welcome to the first episode of Strong Shot Archery Reviews where you get the most unbiased, objective reviews so my personal preference doesn't affect your money. Today we're going to be comparing two bows from two of the top brands in the compound archery world. These bows are the Hoyt Redworks Carbon RX1 and the Matthews Triax. We're going to be looking at the differences between these flagship hunting bows and showing you the things that you need to consider before making a purchase. And as I will always say, I highly, highly recommend that you go to your local archery range and shop there. Because if you're going to spend all this money on a new bow, you're cheating yourself out of the bow's full potential if you don't take it to get it set up by a real professional and tuned for the way that you shoot. So support your local archery range. Their goal is to make you enjoy archery. And this is the perfect segue into the sponsor of this video, which is Bear Creek Archery, who is a local range in Denver, Colorado. So if you're in the area, make sure to stop by. They're a great range. They have some of the best tuning I've ever seen in a local archery range. They even tune my bow, and I don't let anybody touch my bow. So that's just go to show the true quality of this range. So if you're in the area, make sure to stop by or check them out at bearcreekarchery.com. And now for the reason that all you guys are here, the Hoyt Redworks Carbon RX-1 versus the Matthews Triax. The first thing that people will think of comparing first is the size. The axle to axle on the RX-1 is 32 inches, while the Trax comes in at 28 inches. That's a 4 inch difference, which is huge. But if you look at the total length of the bows, the RX-1 is actually only 2 inches larger than the Triax due to the difference in the size of their cams. So why does this matter? When you're hunting, banging your bow into stuff and making noise as you're hiking through the brush isn't typically considered a good thing. <laughs> so a smaller bow can help you keep quiet, but that can come as a cost. I shoot a bow with a really long axle to axle. This is because it's more stable, it aims steadier. When I'm stressed and I hit the wall harder than I normally do, the bow doesn't bounce around as much as it would be with a shorter axle to axle bow. So you have to decide what you need more. Being stable or being stealthy. One byproduct of a shorter axle axle that you might have to consider is the string angle. At full draw, the string on the triax is 4 degrees shallower than the RX1. This means that if you're switching to the triax after shooting a long axle axle bow, you may need to compensate for the lower string. Typically, this will mean that you'll have to raise your anchor point or tilt your head down onto the string. This isn't too big of a deal, but it might take a while to build in that new muscle memory. I did my testing on a 29 inch draw bow, and usually the longer your draw length, the more that this will impact you. Now keep in mind, axle to axle isn't the only thing that contributes to being stable in your shot. Weight's also a factor, and the Trax is a solid half pound heavier than the RX-1. Of course, the RX-1 really shines because of its carbon riser. If you're like me, I live in Colorado, and we're always looking for ways to trim weight when we're hiking miles across rough and mountainous terrain. So depending on your situation, the weight may or may not be a factor for you. And again, as a target shooter, if I had that extra weight on my bow, I would prefer it to be on the stabilizers where it's more effective and not on the riser. We've talked about size and weight, which are a couple of obvious factors, but let's touch on center of balance, which a lot of people don't typically think about. For me, the more balance that I can get the bow, the smoother my execution and follow through. The RX-1 balances more closely to the grip than the Triax. This is probably because of Hoyt's new eccentric limb pocket system, which has their limbs separated more on the bottom, leaving more mass on the bottom for a lower center of gravity. To be fair, I've been talking about how these bows come bare stock, without a sight and without any stabilization. What I think you need to know is that depending on how you like your bow to feel, the Matthews might need more stabilizer weight than the Hoyt in order to bring that center of gravity down. And remember, the Trax is already a heavier bow. I think Matthews realized this and gave us a lower rear stabilizer mounting point. This will lower the center of gravity a lot more efficiently than the RX-1. A quick tip, even if you don't want to run a back bar on your hunting bow, you can always use the mounting point to just bolt some weight on. It's a great way to be able to fine tune the feel of your bow. While stabilizers help you aim better, they also provide some additional dampening for vibration. 
Dampening is a very important factor for both comfort and functionality since it takes away some of that shock and vibration from the shot. The Hoyt RX1 comes with both limb and riser dampeners, while the Triax comes with its three axis riser dampening system and monkey tails on the string to help with string vibration. Let's take a look at what this vibration looks like. You can see that the vibrations on the RX1 have a higher amplitude. That just means that it's louder than the Triax, which obviously can really be important in hunting. The Matthews is branded to be a stealth bow, and this proves it. But keep in mind that there are a lot of accessories on the market for custom dampening. So I don't think this is a make or break factor. You can always, actually you should always, experiment and add additional dampening and stabilization until you like the way your bow feels during the shot. Another main factor that people love talking about is how smooth the draw cycle is for this bow or that bow. I think that it's really a personal preference and how the draw cycle feels can be impacted by a lot of things that you might not think about. Like your axle to axle, the weight of the bow, the grip size, and just how it compares to what you're accustomed to. My approach here is to graph out the draw force curve to tell you where the bow is getting its power. You can see by these graphs that both the Hoyt, which is shown in the red, and the Matthews in blue start off very similar with steep increases in draw weight within the first several inches of your draw. Past that, they both plateau at about the same time. The really interesting thing is that the RX-1 starts to fall into the valley much sooner than the Triax. So why does this matter? By starting the valley sooner, the Hoyt reduced the amount of poundage that you are holding as you get closer to the draw stop. Less poundage for me means that I have more control during the draw and that I can ease into the wall more slowly. Being slow into the wall is really important because it causes less bow shake and you'll waste less time since you don't have to wait for the bow to settle down. The Triax benefits from the more aggressive valley by extracting more power out of the shot. My target bows have typically been more aggressive like this one. Just remember, this can really come into play if you get weak against the wall. If you start to creep forward with an aggressive cam, it's a lot more likely to want to take off on you. And the main concern here should be that you have a bow with the proper poundage for you. It's not about having something that you can muscle back, it's about having something you can control. The Hoyt RX-1 has more weight options than the Triax, with a range of 30 to 80 pounds. That is a huge range. The Trax has a range of 50 to 70 pound limb options, which is more typical option that should work with most shooters. Remember that shot placement and accuracy are key. A fast shot doesn't make up for a bad shot. Now let's talk about the grips. The grip is surprisingly one of the most important parts of the bow since it is one of the few points you actually contact when shooting. More bad shots are because of grip issues than most people actually realize. A bad grip can lead to excess hand tension, which leads to arm tension, which causes form issues in your shoulder, which all morphs itself into torquing the darn bow, which leads to bad archery moments. Now, both of these bows have the ability to use third-party grips, but let's talk about the stock grip. Both bows have about a half inch in flat surface area on the face of the grip. From there, the Triax has a squared off grip, while the RX-1 has a contoured and ergonomic grip. The Triax is very much like my setup for target bows. I want a solid landing area for my hand and nothing more. The purpose there is to sacrifice comfort in order to minimize any bow torque. The Hoyt grip feels nice. You can really tell they put some work into it. And since tension is the enemy, a comfortable grip helps relax your hand, which is a great thing. But there's one thing to consider. How relaxed do you stay when you're stressed? If you clench up when you're getting ready to take that shot of a lifetime, that additional surface area just might help you to torque the arrow right smack dab into that rock. So if you're well practiced and have enough experience in those situations, then it might not matter for you. It's not always about comfort. It's just one more thing to consider and definitely something that you should try out yourself. A big difference in these bows is actually the grip angle. The Hoyt has what I'd consider to be a more typical angle at 18 degrees. The Matthews on the other hand is a lot flatter at 10 degrees. For the most part, this is a personal preference. But if you're switching from one to the other, your body will notice and your group sizes might suffer until you're able to adjust. 
Anytime you make a change in your equipment, it's going to take a while to adjust that muscle memory to bring your group size consistency back into line. Also, you need to be aware that this might impact your draw length slightly, but your archery shop should account for these differences when they fit you for the bow. So I'm going to put some specs on the screen while we wrap this up. For the most part, you'll notice that these bows can almost be configured for anybody. The Hoyt does have more draw weight options and also has the ability to change draw length without swapping out the mods. The more seasoned you are in archery, the less this probably matters to you. Obviously, the biggest discrepancy in this comparison is the cost of the Hoyt. And the Hoyt's made of carbon and high-tech materials cost money. Also, you can find the camo choices at Hoyt.com and MatthewsInc.com. And at the Matthews website, you can even customize your bow to make it look however you please. So to summarize, in my opinion, the only way to decide on the right bow for you is to try them out. You can't decide based on videos or what's posted on online forums. Archery is an individual sport, and the most important thing is finding what best works for you. That being said, here are five things you need to look for when you walk into your local archery shop. Number one, you need to compare the grip. Grip angle, grip thickness, how does it feel in your hand, and which one will suit your best. Number two, look at the size and weight of the bow. Do you need a smaller bow, or do you need a lighter bow? What's most important? Three, what's not normal to you? How much different are these bows from what you're currently shooting? How will you have to adjust your form? How long will it take? Number four, string angle. If you have a long draw length, pay attention to the string angle on the triax. It might not matter for you, but be aware. And number five, price. There's a big difference here. Know what you need, know what you can afford, and buy accordingly. And don't forget, you're probably going to need arrows and everything else. And finally, here's where I see the best application for these bows. For the Hoyt Carbon RX-1, this is for the people that are hiking up mountains and need additional stability for taking longer shots. For the Matthews Triax, this is a great bow for most hunting situations. Longer draw length archers need to try before they buy though. It's a little heavier, but it's also smaller and quieter. This bow was designed for stealth. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this video helped you understand what you need to consider when you go to your local range and try out these bows. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell because I'm going to be making as many of these videos possible with all the bows I can get my hands on. So I just want to say thank you to Bear Creek Archery for letting me get these bows and provide this content for you guys. So thank you guys for all the support and I'll see you guys in the next one. Later. <laughs>